All right, so a few things to remember at incarnation. At incarnation, these souls, of which you were one before you came to earth, did not have a self-awareness. At that time, you also did not have a sexual identity. You didn't realize your own self, and you didn't realize yourself as an individual. You also didn't know yourself as a half of a soul, right? At that particular point when you incarnated, unless your parents knew, you, knew that there were soulmates. Now, because most parents on Earth have no idea about soulmates, of course, they never consider that there is perhaps a soulmate, and so that emotion doesn't flow through them, so it can't flow, flow through you once you incarnate. So when we separate from our soulmate during the process of incarnation, the time, at the time of separation, there is no knowledge of that separation. There is no consciousness of that separation. It is only after the separation occurs and when we start to be individualized, when it, in other words, when we come to Earth, that we start having a consciousness of ourselves. So it's very important to understand that there is no consciousness of the soul separation in the soul half when it first incarnates. And there's a very good reason why that's the case. Because if, if, if it was conscious of it, it would actually go through many terrible emotions right at that point, before it even incarnated. Does that make sense? Yes. So to incarnate from a not unconscious state, remember the soul still has personality, but is unconscious of itself. When it incarnates, that's the process of creating consciousness of itself. In other words, the process of incarnation is essential for you learning that you're an individual and can exercise your free will. But after a while, you start learning actually that you want to connect to one other person and you want to have this other connection. And that's when you start developing this longing inside of yourself that starts growing for a soulmate. Does that make sense? Now, the reason why I'm bringing up soulmates in this sex and sexuality discussion is because in the end, God intended that you have sex with your soulmate. And in the end, God, in fact, intends, if you progress spiritually through all the spheres of the seven spheres, and then you go above that to the 21st sphere, and eventually you go into a soul union state where you reunite with your soulmate on every level. And in that level, you are one soul again. You're not two separate beings. You are one soul that can express itself however it desires. I can speak loud. Oh, it's just that if you don't speak through the mic, then we don't get it recorded, does it? Um, do many people that find their soulmate on Earth and become one sort of thing? Um, many people find their soulmate on Earth, but often do not have a soul a soulmate relationship with their soulmate. The reason why is a soulmate relationship is dependent upon you having a pu pure emotional condition. All of your masculine and feminine injuries need to be released in order for you to have a pure connection with your soulmate. So for that reason, most people even who meet their soulmate on Earth never have a soulmate relationship on Earth. And most people in the spirit world have never had a soulmate relationship until they reach the first celestial sphere, which is the eighth sphere of progression. Most people never experience a soulmate relationship until then. That's not very nice, like, <laughs> well, we well, we can. We can do it here, and that's why I want to show you all this, so that you can do it all here. Does that make sense? Is it possible for us to have more than one soulmate in this scenario? And how does that play on the twin flame? Uh, when we talk about soulmates, we're talking about twin flames. Basically, it's the same thing. Um, there is not, there, there is a common concept today that you can have more than one soulmate, but you can only have one twin flame. What I'm saying is that so, the world's concept of soulmate, the new age concept of soulmate, is really about law of attraction attractions. And that's not what I'm talking about when we're talking about soulmate. What we're talking about when we talk about soulmates is the twin flame type of connection where there is only one. There is only one soulmate for each one of you. Who feels that's a pretty bad deal? 
some of you are probably feel that's a bad, bad deal. Right? The reason why is because a lot of times we have emotions like, oh, I want to choose who that is. But the choice, the choice has actually already been made for you. It's just a matter of you coming to recognize it. In other words, God created your, you, yourself and your soulmate as one entity. Who will be your perfect partner once you deal with all of your emotional injury. Yeah. So it's actually a good system. <laughs> I still have some emotions about it to deal with myself, so... Mary, you asked Mike, wasn't saying it was a good system. That's why I actually... <laughs> <laughs> because last night, the whole thing was slightly different than that, I can assure you. <laughs> last night, it was more like... You know, how come you're my soulmate kind of thing? <laughs> I think I was unhappy with our entire soul. It wasn't it was all the identities and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. It wasn't really that. No, she she was unhappy with her soulmate being Jesus, basically. That's the deal. <laughs> and uh, and and you being Mary. But you are Mary. She's Mary Luck, so she is a Mary of the time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just want to draw another picture. <laughs> um, if you have any feelings of anger or rage or uh, those kind of emotions towards a male or a female, so in other words, if you have any intergender emotional injuries, you will find that a soul mate connection can't really be attracted, or if it is attracted, it won't happen until you release those injuries. You will also find that you can't grow spiritually to at one while you have those injuries.